Ephesians 6, 13 says, Therefore take up the whole armor of God, that you may be able to withstand in the evil day, and having done all, to stand. I would like to take a moment to deconstruct this verse and what it means to us as children of God. The Bible says, Therefore take up the whole armor of God. The first thing to notice is that this is an instruction. We are told to take up the whole armor of God. It's not a question of whether you can or cannot take this up. No, it's a clear instruction. This is something you need to do. The second thing is that you only need armor if you're in a war. You only need armor in battle. You only need armor when there is an opposing force that's coming against you. And when the Bible says the whole armor, this says to me that there are multiple parts that need to be taken up. Anything other than the whole armor would leave you vulnerable. So it's important that we follow this instruction and not only take up parts of the armor, but the whole armor of God. Now, the second part to this verse says that you may be able to withstand in the evil day. This statement has a level of certainty to it. You need to take up the whole armor of God so that you can withstand in the evil day. Now, in this part of the verse, I get the impression that the Bible is warning us. The Bible is warning us that there will be an evil day, a day when we will have to fight the forces of evil. And the forces of evil they can attack in many forms. However, if we are wearing the whole armor of God, then we will be able to withstand anything the devil aims in our direction. Now that we have a better understanding of this verse, I want to encourage you, and I want to rally you up. Yes, you are in a war. If you are a true disciple of Christ, you will be at war. You're at war against the rulers, against the authorities, against the powers of this dark world, and against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. Now, in these few moments, I want to remind you that the word is central to your defensive stance, as well as your offensive stance as a Christian. So, when you face the evil day, remember 2 Thessalonians 3 verse 3. But the Lord is faithful, who will establish you and guard you from the evil one. Remember Deuteronomy 31, verse 6. Be strong and of good courage. Do not fear nor be afraid of them. For the Lord your God, he is the one who goes with you. He will not leave you nor forsake you when you face the evil day. Psalm 46, verse 1 says, God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. The Lord is with you, and the promises of God should give you the confidence to be bold in the face of evil. The Bible has many references to God as our protector, as a shield, as a good shepherd, a fortress, a deliverer, even our shelter, refuge, and strength. Now, I'd like to share with you a psalm of protection that I hold dear to my heart. Psalm 25, verses 20 through 21. Oh, guard my soul and deliver me. Let me not be put to shame, for I take refuge in you. May integrity and uprightness preserve me, for I wait for you. We all need the presence of God to guard us. The enemy is after our souls. And David understood this, and so his plea to the Lord was that his soul would be guarded and secured by the Almighty God. And so at this moment, I pray in the name of Jesus Christ that your soul may be guarded. May your soul be guarded against the devil. May your soul be guarded against sin. May it be guarded from deceit and every manner of evil. Now let us pray. Lord Jesus, you are my great defender. 
you are my mighty protector. Revelation 12 verse 11 says, And they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony, and they did not love their lives to the death. I am blessed because I'm covered by your blood, Lord, the precious blood of the Lamb of God. Your word tells me that I can overcome the devil by the blood of the Lamb and the word of my testimony. And so I plead the blood of Jesus Christ over my life. I plead the blood of Jesus Christ over my family. The word of my testimony is that Jesus Christ is the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. The word of my testimony is that Jesus Christ is victorious Jesus Christ is triumphant, and greater is he who is in me than he who is in the world. Lord Jesus, you have never lost a battle. There is no one who can challenge you, and so I firmly place my confidence in you. You are the reason why I am more than a conqueror. You are the reason why my heart is filled with boldness and with courage. Psalm 138 verses 7 through 8 says, Though I walk in the midst of trouble, you will revive me. You will stretch out your hand against the wrath of my enemies, and your right hand will save me. The Lord will perfect that which concerns me. Your mercy, O Lord, endures forever. Do not forsake the work of your hands. I am encouraged by your word, which tells me that you, my Lord, will perfect that which concerns me. You will straighten out everything crooked in my path. You will remove all obstacles, and you will certainly prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. Be praised, Lord. You are an awesome God. I pray that you would stand with me always. The Bible says in Isaiah 59 verse 19, So shall they fear the name of the Lord from the west and his glory from the rising of the sun. When the enemy comes in like a flood, the Spirit of the Lord will lift up a standard against him. I praise you, Lord Jesus, because when the enemy comes at me and my family, you are faithful to block all of his attacks. The enemy cannot overwhelm me because I am holding on to the promises in God's word. Promises that tell me I have authority in Jesus' name. Promises that tell me that a thousand may fall at my side, 10,000 at my right hand, but it will not come near me. Lord Jesus, I'm at peace. I declare that there is no fear within me because you've not given me a spirit of fear. You have given me a spirit of power, love, and a sound mind. I can say that all is well with me because you are for me, Lord. And if God is for me, who can be against me? Who can stand against you, the lion of the tribe of Judah? So great is your power and might that the earth is your footstool. Thank you for your faithfulness, my great deliverer. Thank you for hearing my prayer. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. One thing that you need to make a practice of is praying. Make it a habit to pray in the morning. Make it a habit to pray every evening. Make it a habit and a routine to pray often and to pray daily. We sometimes take life for granted. We take God's protection for granted. But let me tell you that you are most vulnerable when you're comfortable. The devil loves a comfortable Christian and God calls a comfortable Christian lukewarm. And that's because you're neither hot nor cold. You're neither here or there. There's no urgency about you, and there sure enough isn't any fire to your prayers. 
However, I want to emphasize the importance of prayer. We need the Lord to watch over us and to protect us. The Bible says in Mark chapter 14, verse 38, watch and pray so that you will not fall into temptation. The spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. You see, when you are comfortable and prayerless, you are in your weakest state as a believer. And friends, let me tell you something. When you are prayerless, you are vulnerable to spiritual attacks. You need to understand that the forces of darkness operate in darkness, both spiritually and in the physical too. The devil is cunning and he certainly doesn't play fair. He will wait until you've let your guard down and you are dull in your spiritual senses because of a lack of prayer. That's when he will attack. But today, I want to encourage you and remind you of the protection we have in Jesus Christ. The devil may try whatever he wants, but we are guarded by Jesus Christ. We are shielded by Jesus Christ. The blood of Jesus Christ has formed a perimeter around our homes. The angel of the Lord encamps at our residence when we call on the name of the Father. I encourage you not to fear whatever comes your way because Jesus Christ is a mighty protector. He is a savior. Jesus Christ will cover you and block the enemy. So each and every day, I encourage you to pray for the divine protection that comes only from the Son of God. It's the kind of protection that rebukes the enemy and exposes his plans. It gives no power to spiritual attacks. David, a man after God's own heart, said in Psalm chapter 119, verse 62, at midnight, I rise to praise you because of your righteous rules. I encourage you to rise up at any time of day, rise up and praise the Lord. Thank him for all he has done. Thank him for all he is doing and for all he will continue to do. Now, let us pray. My dear Lord Jesus, you deserve all the glory and you deserve to be honored. You deserve to be praised for your faithfulness. I invite you into my heart and into my home. May your presence be found in this place. I pray that the presence of the Holy Spirit will be strong in my home. I pray that you would watch over me always. I pray, Lord, that you would wrap me in your loving arms and keep me safe. Defend me from every attack of the enemy, Lord Jesus. Protect me from all trouble and all unrest. Protect me from the evil in this world and preserve me from the attacks of the devil. I will forever sing praises to your holy name. I will lift the name of Jesus Christ on high, higher than all of my cares and problems higher than every principality and power of darkness. Your word in Psalm chapter 57 verse 1 states, Be merciful to me, O God, be merciful to me, for my soul trusts in you, and in the shadow of your wings I will make my refuge until these calamities have passed by. Indeed, I will be sheltered all the days of my life when I am hidden in your presence. So I praise you, Master. Today, I will cry out to you alone, Lord Jesus, the one who performs miraculous works for me. You are my hope and rescue. I will be at peace knowing that you have said in your word that I should not be afraid, for I have you with me. I should not be discouraged because you, Jehovah, are my God, the creator of all the ages who will strengthen me, the only one with resurrection power 
that will help me. I speak with the authority that's in the name of Jesus, and I declare that no weapon formed against me shall prosper. No plan or scheme from the enemy will prosper in Jesus' name. Instead, Lord, I pray that you give me a sound mind. I come before you, Lord, with a heart and a mind that is focused on you. Keep me in your arms, Lord Jesus. Your love and protection is more real than what my natural eyes can see. I place all of my trust and confidence in you, Lord. In every situation I face, every battle I face, I will put my trust in you. Give me ears to hear you, Master. Give me ears that are sensitive to your instruction and your guidance. Give me eyes that will see your goodness always. I pray for a heart that will always remain faithful to you. Jesus, you are the solid foundation that my life has been built on. You are the Son of the living God. You died on the cross for my sins, and your blood was shed for me so that I may never be defeated. I have total faith and confidence in you because even death was powerless to hold you. When you watch over me, I know that the enemy will be powerless over my life you are my risen Savior who has the power to resurrect my spirit and my faith. Today, Lord, I receive your resurrection power and declare that there is no dead thing in my life. There is no evil that can come near me because the blood of the Lamb of God protects me. I declare that there are no cracks in my foundation because Christ is the solid rock I stand on. Thank you for hearing this prayer. In the precious name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. One Sunday morning in the summer of 1983, we arrived for our weekly service, and just as everyone started to leave the car, I quickly got my dad's attention and asked him to give me a Bible verse to recite because the Sunday school teacher had told every child to come prepared with a verse to tell the church. My dad quickly opened up his trusted leather Bible that was decorated with notes and highlighted passages from the years of study. He opened up Exodus 14 verse 14 and read, The Lord shall fight for you and you shall hold your peace. And that was it. That was the verse. I memorized it there and then, and over 25 years later, this verse still has a powerful meaning over my life. It's a verse that I've spoken to myself when I was in the middle of hardship. It's a verse that I've recited whenever I was scared and facing a situation where the outcome was unknown. Exodus 14 verse 14 is a verse that I have recited many times over the years simply to encourage myself when I felt as though I was overwhelmed by the pressures of life. And perhaps you have a verse, a verse or a passage of scripture that speaks to you deeply because of one reason or another. And so I am sure you can understand why this verse, the very first Bible verse that I memorized as a child, it has a deeper meaning to me, especially as I've gone through the ups and downs of life. And think about it. The Lord shall fight for you. Who are we talking about here? The God of the universe. The God of all creation. The Bible describes him saying, heaven is his throne and the earth is his footstool. So it's this God, the God of the Bible who will fight for you. Truth be told, not many people will fight for someone else. A father will one day teach his son to fight his own battles. A brother or a friend will one day tell you that they can't fight for you, they have to think of themselves. There aren't many situations where you will find someone who says, whatever comes your way, I will fight for you. But here in Exodus, God promises just that, to fight for us, and that's not even the best part. The best part is that the Bible tells us that as God is fighting for us, we will keep our peace. And so may this word encourage you to give your battle to the Lord. Whatever your battle looks like, God will fight for you.
He will be your great defender. He will be your shield and strong tower. So as you listen, I believe that we all need to have the following prayer points. We need to pray for God's protection against all manner of evil. We need to pray for wisdom and truth so that we aren't deceived. We need to pray for the spirit of discernment. We need to pray and plead the blood of Jesus Christ to out anything that seeks to corrupt, disturb, or hinder your spirit, your home, or your family. Only through prayer, through the Word of God, and through the covering of the Holy Spirit can we be delivered from the evil in this world. In Psalm 103, verse 13, the Bible says, The Lord is like a father to his children, tender and compassionate to those who fear him. And if you read Psalm 68, verse 5, the Bible says, A father of the fatherless, a defender of widows, is God in his holy habitation. Now, as I was growing up, my father always used to say to me, Son, it's my job to protect you. He would say that time and time again. And it's only when I had my own family that I truly understood what he meant. As a father, I will defend my family. And I often think about it like this. If I feel this way, if I, as a sinful man, can feel so strongly about loving and defending my family, then what about God? Imagine how much the Lord loves us and in Him loving us so much. Imagine just how strongly He would protect us. Matthew 6 verse 26 says, Look at the birds. They don't plant or harvest or store food in barns, for your heavenly Father feeds them. And Aren't you far more valuable to Him than they are? As children of God, the Bible tells us that we are valuable in God's eyes. We are dearly loved, and we are certainly protected. Allow me to give you a few biblical examples of how God protected His children throughout time. God's protection meant that Gideon and his army of 300 men were greatly outnumbered but they had God's favor. They had God's protection. God's protection meant that no harm came to Daniel, even though he was thrown into a lion's den. God's protection meant that the three Hebrew boys weren't burned alive, even though they were thrown into a furnace. God's protection meant that Goliath, a skilled giant warrior, was no match for a boy with a few stones. What I'm trying to put across to you is that. Jesus Christ is our great protector. He is the ultimate. He is the lion of the tribe of Judah. He is our great defender. He's a mighty shield that blocks every arrow from the devil. Dear friend, let me tell you, the ultimate protection you can have is Jesus Christ. In Him, you are hidden from the enemy's line of sight. We can do all we can to physically protect our families, but ultimately, only God can save us. Only God can defend us. We can do all we can to protect our health, but ultimately, God is the one in control. Now, I would like to read a few verses from what I consider to be one of the greatest passages of Scripture regarding our protection as children of God. The Bible reads in Psalm 121, verse 1 to 3, I will lift up my eyes to the hills. From whence comes my help? My help comes from the Lord, who made heaven and earth. He will not allow your foot to be moved. He who keeps you will not slumber. Now let us pray. Lord, you are a mighty and all-powerful God. 
we enter your presence with sincere gratitude and we reverence your name. As your children, we are thankful for your protection. Thank you for being our safe place, Lord. Thank you for being our refuge. Lord Jesus, we are thankful for your wonderful care and tender mercies. Your word tells us that our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the powers of this dark world, and against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. However, in this fight, King Jesus, we can always rely on you. We are grateful that we can rely on you as both our protector and protection. So should we face any evil opposition, we declare no weapon formed against us shall prosper. Should we face any principalities or powers of darkness, then we can stand and declare that no weapon formed against us shall prosper. We need your heavenly protection, Father. Your word says in Psalm 34, verse 7 to 8, the angel of the Lord encamps all around those who fear him and delivers them. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man who trusts in him. Thank you for your promise of protection, a psalm that offers such a blessed hope. I pray that your angels to encamp around us and around our homes. Strengthen us so that we will be able to withstand the storms of life and any challenges that come to test us. Strengthen us to be able to withstand any attacks from the enemy. Give us the power we need to overcome the enemy's attacks. Give us peace so that we will not allow fear and anxiety to hold us back. We put our trust in you as our ultimate source of divine protection. As your children, we refuse to let anxiety or fear become our companion. Help us to trust in you and not to worry. Help us to trust in your ability to keep us safe and secure. We are blessed because I am under the care of Jehovah. We are blessed because you watch over us each and every day. We are blessed and protected because you go before us, Lord Jesus, and watch over our coming in and going out. And so this means we will rejoice always because of you. We will put our faith in you regardless of what we're facing. We will give thanks to you in all of our circumstances. And it's all because you have a plan for our lives that is divine in purpose. Father, we trust that all of our steps are ordered by you. We have confidence in your word that tells us to approach the throne of grace boldly. Thank you for being good. Thank you for being patient. Father, I pray that I will always abide under your shadow, meaning that I am always close to you. You are always near and never too far from me. I will say to you, Lord, you are my safe place and you are my strong tower. You are my God and I am trusting in you to be with me always and to be my defender now and forevermore. I bless your holy name, Lord. Amen.